Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video. I thought it might be fun to sort of show you my little workshops slash lab that I have. Um, this is actually in my garage. So, you know, most of my stuff is sort of consumer grade um, stuff, although um, this little T12 uh, soldering station is, is actually uh, pretty awesome. Um, it actually uses genuine uh, HACO um, tips, uh, T12 tips, and uh, so that's what I actually use. Um, I've got a little extraction fan system. I've got my Raspberry Pi computer on the wall with my uh, little Logitech uh, wireless keyboard. I've got a fairly crap, admittedly, um, UniT oscilloscope. To be honest, I mean, it's okay for what I do with it, but it's, um, yeah. It's in need of an upgrade, but I don't use it that often, so um, yeah, I can't complain. Uh, for you know, yeah, I think it cost me like a hundred dollars second hand, so I reckon that was a pretty good deal. Um, I've got my dual spool Hacko um, holder, it's a genuine one, I think, if I remember correctly. I've got my Yumcha Chinese three liter um, ultrasonic cleaner, which to be honest pretty fantastic um, really makes my life a lot easier um, you know basically just being able to chuck stuff in there um, you know really makes a huge difference I usually run it at about 60 degrees Celsius and for about 10 minutes and think things come out really well uh, like for example you can see uh, this here you know this is one of the um, um, sorry Atari rather slash Commodore 64 to ten to uh, Tandy adapters as you can see that's pretty damn clean you know um, sorry getting a bit of uh, refinance off this so uh, I mean I'm sort of in my mid 40s now so for for me my eyesight's not not the greatest I, I do wear glasses as as some of you will probably have noticed in previous videos so this um, is pretty much um, you know what I do all my soldering through um, it's uh, it's pretty good. It's five times. It's actually designed for the beauty industry of all things. Um, but yeah, it's it's fantastic. So I'm a big fan. Um, yeah, um, it basically just is on this sort of swivel stand. So yeah, it makes my life rather easy. Um, you know, for really close up stuff, I've just got this um, you know fairly cheap thing um, with a little LED light on it. I think it's the same one that uh, Adrian Black uses very handy um, my favorite device in here happens to be my echo show 5 which I, I use for playing audiobooks um, I'm currently working my way through the the latest uh, uh, the latest book from oh crap I'm struggling to remember so this is sort of most of my sort of parts for things that uh, you know I'm building at the moment um, uh, lots of things like you know ICs, DS uh, uh, 1315s, you know lots and lots of PCBs um, here, can of uh, isopropyl alcohol and yes I, I do say that correctly um, this happens to be the best flux I have ever used it is simply fantastic from Edson in the US um, yeah, absolutely amazing. I actually use it with um, chip quick solder, which is utterly brilliant. If I can retrieve this, um, so yeah, I buy uh, this stuff here. Uh, focus. Yeah, so this stuff is no clean flux. So this one's actually water soluble, um, which is great because it means that. I can put stuff into my um, my little machine here, um, and I just simply use good old distilled water from the supermarket. You know, this is like dirt cheap, absolutely dirt cheap. So yeah, fantastic. Yeah. I mean, you can get about I don't know a week's worth of heavy use out of out of it. You know. Um, once the water sort of gets a little bit murkier than that, then you do need to replace it. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, even that's that's fine for probably another use or two. I mean, at the moment, one of my one of my um, 
current projects that I'm building a lot of is uh, is well what you can see on screen here actually it's the um, RGB to HDMI um, boards um, so this is the actual PCBs um, let's turn that off that might improve things yep cool better um, so yeah the, that's the CPLD hat at the top and the RGB TTL board at the bottom um, yeah pretty cool project uh, I'm having fun building it so in terms of how I usually build my stuff um, so for larger projects like this I actually keep all of my parts in this project case so let me just chuck that up there so this is just like I think it's designed for storing photos or something but yeah I'll literally just um, you know get out my label maker label all the bits and pieces and um, keep most of the parts in here so for example as you can see in this one I've got the um, the uh, uh, LS245 74 series logic chips in here um, and uh, and I've also got the 10 nanosecond CPLDs so just makes it easier for me to find stuff especially you know like when you got these sort of things um, you know 10k 0805 um, resistors you know these things look basically identical to the one case um, you know the only way you can tell the difference is by actually using a multimeter or getting a microscope to actually read the damn uh, labels on them uh, and even then you know not very clear and you know capacitors a little it's a little bit easier with capacitors I mean these these tens here for example are fairly easy to determine what what they are by looking at them in, in comparison to you know the hundreds um, you know the hundreds are uh, um, they're a bit flatter and a bit easier to look at. Um, yeah, and then you got lots of resistor networks and you know, DE9 and DB9 connectors and all that sort of fun stuff. And you know, some bits that I'm not using as much of. You know, some some capacitors. So, um, oh yeah, all the printed circuit boards. So. These are all the all the current PCBs I have available for this particular project. Yeah. As you can see, that's the the RGB TTL board. That's the CPLD board. That's the back side of it. That's the top side. Yeah. Loads of switches. Good old loads of headers and various different form factors. A lot less green LEDs than I started off with, and so on. Um, you know, and for other projects as well. You know, there's, uh, you know, as you can see, I've got a stack of uh, pin headers and dual wipe sockets. Okay, so I thought it might be fun to do a bit of a surface mount soldering tutorial, seeing as I I know quite a few folks are um, well effectively intimidated by it. Is I think the the right word. Um, it certainly can be tricky. So what I've got here is I've got my um, PCBs and I've got the two main service mount chips that go on this particular um, project. And this is the uh, the RGB to HDMI um, project that I've been building uh, recently. So uh, hopefully you guys can see that okay. Um, Hopefully the focus and everything is okay. Um, I'm basically shooting this on my mobile phone on my bench um, and I, <laughs> I can't actually see the screen on my phone and I'm using the selfie cam, which is definitely not ideal. Um, so the, the things that I recommend folks have for surface mount soldering um, are as follows. So first of all, you do need a decent soldering iron. Uh, this is a... Um, Hacko T12 based system. Um, the actual um, system itself is not not by Hacko, but I am actually using genuine Hacko tips. Uh, so let me just clean this off. So this is a well tip. Um, I highly recommend these. Um, you can see there's like a little well in in the middle there. Um, if you're doing any surface mount soldering, um, honestly, this is the only way to fly. Um, so as you can see, it holds like a little bubble of solder just there, um, and uh, I'll show you why that that's important um, in a few minutes. 
Um, now, by the way, I don't have my um, extraction fan on because it's reasonably noisy and I'm shooting this video. The reason why the, the Hakko T12s are so good is see how close my fingers are to the tip. Right, this is really important for good control. If you, if you have one of those um, you know, USB powered ones or, or other sort of cheap ones, um, they have got to be blunt, um, they're garbage. Um, I, I know they're handy because they you know, power them off USB and some of them are even rechargeable. Um, but the problem you've got is you basically end up holding it back this far from, from the tip which is, you know, it's far from ideal. It does not give you very good control. Um, it's just a bad idea. Uh, so yeah, highly recommend get yourself a decent soldering station. They are really affordable. I'll post links to AliExpress where I got mine from. Um, they work off 240 volts or 110 volts mains. Um, they use a full PID based heat system. They heat up in about six seconds. They've got sleep modes, you can calibrate them. Um, and like I said, you, you know, even though the system itself is a Hakko clone, um, you can actually buy the genuine Hakko tips, which I have done. These are genuine Hakkos. Um, this is my 1.8 millimeter chisel tip. Um, so yeah, you can buy the genuine Hakkos um, from um, DigiKey, RS, etc. Anyone that stocks um, Hakko um, you know, supplies. Uh, so that way you get a really high quality tip um, and you can use it with your, um, you know, with your T12 compatible station. And they're not actually knockoffs, they're actually based on an open source project originally as I understand it. But yeah, they're really fantastic. Very fast heat up times, very consistent um, in terms of keeping temperature. You know, they've got a, a button that you, uh, you can press on the rotary encoder that um, bumps the temperature up by 50 degrees Celsius, um, you know, when you need it for, you know, really um, you know, uh, thick ground planes and all that sort of thing. Highly recommend them, well worth it. So the next thing I recommend is good solder. And the solder I use is uh, from Chipquick. Um, now, honestly, as long as you're getting good quality solder, it doesn't really matter. Um, so this is the, the one I'm using. Um, it's fairly expensive, I buy it um, you know, in this huge reel, it's about half a kilo um, or one pound thereabouts. Yeah, one pound. Um, it's 0.8 millimeter, and it's um, it's flux core solder. Um, but the beauty of it is that it's um, it's actually uh, no clean water washable flux. Honestly, no clean solder itself in general, total waste of time. I don't recommend leaving, you know, no even no clean flux on your boards. It looks unprofessional. Um, it's just, it's poor practice in my opinion, but it also, you know, years down the track, that solder residue, uh, sorry, flux residue rather, can actually cause you problems. Um, the reason I use this one is because it's water soluble, which means that I can actually clean it in my ultrasonic cleaner with no chemicals. All I use is distilled water, no problem whatsoever. The other thing that's really important as well is flux. So I use um, I use this from Edson. It is absolutely fantastic, and it's compatible with the Chip Quick I use. Uh, so that's actually important. It will actually take you a little bit of experimenting sometimes to find a flux that works with your solder. Um, for example, I've tried using this with um, some cheap rosin core solder that was, you know, um, non. Um, water soluble and non no clean, if that makes any sense at all. Um, and yeah, it, it it wasn't it wasn't a good combination at all. Didn't work well. Um, so I'm not so Edson. I think is actually a US company. Um, I got I think I get this from DigiKey. Um, but yeah, that the FL 911 is really good quality stuff. Highly recommend that. Um, also, very very easy to apply. You know, comes with that built in. So very handy. The other thing you need is some really good quality um, tweezers. Uh, the, these ones, are, again, I think from either DigiKey or RS, these are Edson's as well. Um, these are apparently made in Germany. They're just you know, really, really great quality. Um, very, very highly recommend them. Um, 
you know, cheap tweezers are just, you know, they're exactly that. They're cheap, they're not very good. Um, they tend to look like this and they cost a couple of dollars. It's worth spending 20 or 30 Australian dollars um, on decent tweezers. These things, they're crap. I, I use them when I don't care um, about damaging something or, you know, don't care about the fact that they don't pick things up very well. So, like, you know, they, you know, they, they pick that up okay there, but, you know, um, if you're trying to desold or something and pull it off, they crap. One thing I cannot um, reiterate often enough is flux is your friend. Um, you absolutely need flux, um, you know, and it's pretty hard to use too much. So what we'll do is we'll start off with the um, the the less fine pitched package, um, which is this one here. Um, this is for the um, TTL RGB board. Um, so one thing make sure you find the little dot in the corner uh, and make sure it matches up with the dot in on the PCB so hopefully you guys can see that okay okay so first step liberal coding of flux um, and um, oh yes the other thing uh, I do run my soldering station at uh, uh, 360 degrees Celsius, uh, none of that Fahrenheit rubbish. <laughs> um, yeah, I uh, know. I know there's still some countries left that uh, use Fahrenheit, but you know, the rest of the world has thankfully moved on. All right, so uh, hopefully this will show up okay because I've got my I've got my um, five times magnification light here. So basically, all you need to do um, to start off with is lightly tin the pad, grab your tweezers or well, actually half the time I just use my fingers pop it on, like I said, make sure the orientation is correct um, hopefully I'm not, my fingers aren't getting in the way of this so you guys can actually see what I'm doing Yeah, just make sure you really align it well just makes your life a lot easier so that, that's not too bad um, and then we'll go around the other side on, on the opposite corner and we'll do exactly the same thing. Okay, so yeah, I mean, that alignment, you know, that's good enough. And then for the next bit is soldering on. Now th this particular pitch is just dead easy to solder. Um, by the way, I think I might have mentioned this, but too much flux is uh, not a thing. Flux is useful. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of doing this on the angle that it, on on the, and an angle that I don't normally do it, but just so that you guys can see it. But anyway, so this is uh, you know you only need a very small amount of solder on the end of your well tip, and then you just simply um, let's see if I can do this without getting in the way of them. Just drag it across, and if you haven't put enough flux on, that's fine. Add a little bit more. And there we go. Bob's your uncle. That came up quite well, I think. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. Uh, the light might be causing some problems, but yeah. Perfect. Let's do the other side. Now you notice the alignment on those pins isn't perfect, by the way, but you know, it's good enough. Not gonna cause any problems. So yeah, well tip, once again, you can actually see the well here. Let's give it a quick clean. Pop some more flux in, and uh, yeah, let's beautiful. There we go, perfect, just like a ball one. So yeah, you can see both sides done. Now that was really easy. Um, you know, this particular pitch is not very fine. When it gets a bit trickier is when we get to stuff like this one. Now this this is a CPLD, um, 10 nanoseconds, and it has very fine um, pitches uh, in between the pins, as you can see. Um, yeah, this is a bit trickier, but the exact same method still applies. So let's get some flux. Let's make sure we align that the right way 
Um, before I forget, let's clean our tip. Um, highly recommend you clean your tip very fre frequently, as well as you know retin. Um, so there we go. We're just going to bit of solder on the corner there. Just going to use my tweezers to pick this up, and then I'll use my hands to actually maneuver it because I'm a bit unco with tweezers sometimes with square parts. You know, this is a QFP. It's just a little bit easier for me. Um, although sometimes I will use the tweezers just to you know, lift it up so it doesn't catch. So yeah, the tricky part for this is just aligning it. Um, you really need to make sure you align every single um, every single axis. That's the word I was looking for. So yeah, all right. Let me just maneuver my right so I can see. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. So now we get our soldering iron and we just weld that corner down. Ta-da, done. So yeah, you can see I actually got the alignment um, pretty good on that. You know, that's that's not bad at all. So now we'll just move to the other corner. So I'll just rotate that around. Um, get my soldering station, uh, soldering iron rather, to bring it tinned. Just make sure everything's pretty well aligned. Okay, really should have put some flux on. There we go. So that's now welded in place and that's pretty well aligned. So what we're gonna do next is basically what we did on the other one. Add some flux, clean our tip. Make sure that's on. And then we just simply put it on and drag. Now, let me just check it. And we've got a couple of bridges, that's fine, no problem. We can easily fix that just by whacking on a bit more flux, making sure our tip is clean. Yeah, almost there. Not quite. That one's being a bit stubborn. I think I might need to Retin my uh, retin my tip. And I think I need to clean the well. You can see that sort of dark bit forming in the in the well. It means I need to tin it. I'll do that in a sec. Because trust me, it does make a difference. Okay, so normally this will actually help me wick it up. So I'm going to tin my tip because uh, making myself look a bit foolish here. So. Just got some uh, tip tinner from uh, Thermaltronics. This stuff stinks like crazy, but works great. I think I got it from Mechtronics. But yeah, basically just run the tip through a few times. Maybe make sure you move it around a bit. Give it a bit of a clean with your wet cloth. Oh, sorry, with your wet sponge. Go back, make sure it's tinning, which it is, which is good. So yeah, never hurts to be uh, you know, generous with the tip tinning. Okay, um, that looks a lot better. Still, let's go a little bit more. Alrighty. And that's much better. Okay, it's amazing how much difference a tinned tip will make. So yeah, you can see no bridges anymore. That looks good. That's how it should have looked in the first place. Alrighty, let's go to the opposite side. Decent amount of flux. Clean our tip. Make sure we don't put too much solder on this time. Just a dab, just a little dab. Now 
this is definitely much harder with me uh, facing it away from me so that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it okay there we go so as you can see I you know, dragged it a few times just to make sure that the solder came um, you know across all the pins but as you can see that's soldered up pretty well I think. hopefully you can see that okay the lighting is probably not the greatest okay now repeat that for the other ones so these are the two sides we tacked now Okay, beautiful. Let's see, came up very nicely. No bridges. That uh, looks good. And now we just need to do the other side. done so yeah as you can see apart from that one side that gave me some trouble because of you know my own stupidity not cleaning my not tinning rather my soldering iron tip the rest of that was actually extremely easy so next stop let's do some let's do some passives so I'm just gonna chuck on some um, 1k 805 series uh, onto the onto the CPLD board so again um, grab your tweezers you really really need tweezers for for, uh, for these because um, yeah they're um, they're a pain so there's about five of these I think if I remember correctly five you know four and five so these are really easy but you know you do need either good eyesight or good magnification or both um, so Way I, the way I do this whole process um, is, uh, you know, fairly straightforward. Um, let me just move these over so they're out of the way. Lose them. Okay, so um, again, I'm still using my um, my well tip. I just go through and basically just run it over all the pads um, to put a nice bit of solder on you don't want too much um, the nice thing about this is it actually does give you good controllability um, while I'm here I'm gonna tin all the all the pads I want to tin so I'm just gonna a bit tricky. I really should have put more flux on. Like I said, pretty hard to use too much flux. thing about the well tip is it will actually suck the excess solder off frequently for you so kind of neat okay so now let's get our tweezers now I'm right-handed so I'm a bit on the unco side with my um, left hand but anyway this is not very difficult Basically, just heat up the pad. I'm actually using the, the tip on an angle you'll be able to see. If it's not entirely flat, just push it down. You can straighten it up if you really want to. Sometimes I'm OCD, sometimes I'm not. Just depends on what sort of mood I'm in. 
obviously I'll try and make it look professional, but you know, move it around until you're happy with it. Try not to let it go as I did until it's actually finished setting. Gonna be a next one. Fiddly little things they are. Okay. And this technique applies to um, surface mount capacitors of the radial style as well as the rectangular packages. It really isn't much different to be honest. You just, you know, put some solder on one pad, drop some paste on, uh, sorry, drop some uh, flux on rather, and um, yeah, just align them till you're happy with them. Oops, I'm going to move that. That wasn't very clever. Oops. Okay, I guess that one didn't really want to be adjusted. Okay, so that's all of the resistors I'm doing for this section. The other one is actually a different uh, value resistor, so I'm going to ignore that for the moment. I think it's a 10K, whereas these are ones. So then flip the board around. Um, I like to throw a bit more flux at it, just to make my life easier. some more solder on the tip and then you just simply you know, but ends like that most of the time you won't even need to add much add much if any um, solder as you can see at least not while you're actually touching the component it'll just literally suck it straight out of the well tip so that one made a liar out of me like so pretty easy and because and then to tidy things up, I like to clean my tip off, throw some more flux on. This is how I make them look pretty. And then literally with a nice clean tip, I just simply drag it across the edges of each component to pull off excess solder, which is again, one of the nice things about a well tip. See, as you can see, it's now got way more solder on it than it started with. And do the same on the other sides. And voila, you actually have some, you know, very clean looking surface mount capacitor, uh, resistors or surface mount passives in general. So yeah, that is pretty easy. So yeah, I hope this um, video has been, been helpful. And um, I might just clean this up a bit so that you guys can see it in a bit better quality. Okay, there we go, there's our boards. It's just uh, oops, bumping the camera there. Not very uh, professional of me. Good thing I don't do this for a living, hey? Uh, let's get a few things out of the way. Grab my little brush and my uh, my uh, well of isopropyl. And yeah, just clean it on. This is just, you know, if you need to do a quick and dirty clean. Heat gun, give it a try. Good enough. Okay, so let's start off with the uh, with the easy one. Hopefully, this will focus. Yeah. As you can see. It came up very well. Let's just actually zoom in. Ah, oh, that's better. Excuse my nails. They're a bit of a mess. Uh, so yeah, that I think came up quite well. Yeah, alignment is not perfect, but hey, when you're doing manual soldering, it never is. And item number two, again, came up quite well. No bridges. So yeah, pretty happy with that. And as you can see, if you look at the 
and passives, you know, I mean, they're never going to be super pretty, but, um, you know, when you hand solder them, but, you know, quite acceptable. you guys found that um, little soldering uh, tutorial informative um, I'm gonna leave the mistakes in because um, yeah I mean let's face it no one's perfect and um, anyone who claims they are is um, probably lying so um, yeah I'll, I'll leave the mistakes in just so that you guys can see how I fixed them anyway hope you guys found this informative uh, we'll see you in the next one